hi booktube I I wasn't gonna make a video to, but because I'm kind of tired uh, it's a long story why well we had our granddaughter over here for a, an overnight stay and she uh, kept us awake she had a bad cold and would wake up during the night and my wife was going in and out of the bedroom and I don't know, I didn't get much sleep, but she's gone. She's back with her mom and dad there in Grand Rapids, our oldest son. So, uh, but it's been a day since I made a video and I wasn't going to make a video. I was going to take a bunch of books down into the lower level where the, our library is, but I figured, well, I might as well just show the books. Uh, first of all, I was reading the other day, I was reading, I mentioned this book, uh, Shakespeare and Company, The History of the Rags and Bone Shop of the Heart, edited by Krista Haverson. This is the like a memoir kind of history of the Shakespeare and Company, a bookstore in Paris, France. Uh, well, it's mainly this story of Shakespeare and Company was first started by a woman. Her name was Sylvia Beach. This is her. This is her. Uh, she wrote this. She's, uh, it says here, Sylvia Beach made literary history when in 1922 she published James Joyce's Ulysses then banned in every English-speaking country and the world under the imprint of Shakespeare and Company, her American bookshop on the left bank. Not only Joyce, but most of the writers who were, who were to make the 20s famous were then converging on Paris to live and work. They were all customers and callers at Shakespeare and Company, the little bookshop at 12 Rue de Odin, Odin, I can't speak. I can't speak French, became the humming center of the most significant literary movement of our century. So this is a, her story of how she got to open up this bookstore. This is her memoir. This is called Shakespeare and Company, a memoir of the writers who made the 20s famous by the first publisher of James Joyce's novel Ulysses by Sylvia Beach, the story of an American bookshop in Paris. Uh, she closed the bookstore when the Nazis uh, occupied Paris during the Second World War, and after the war, she didn't she didn't reopen it. And then, but the name Shakespeare and Company was taken over by a man named George Whitman. Uh, there, in uh, the early fifties. He, he got permission where he became friends. He already had a books, like a book business in Paris, but he wanted his own bookshop. And he found this place, a little shop that he, he bought and he met Sylvia Beach and she said that she, he could use the her, the uh, the name Shakespeare and Company. So yeah, so I was reading this. Uh, I was reading this the other day, really enjoying it. I recommend uh, reading Shakespeare and Company by Sylvia Beach if you want to know about the first beginning of Shakespeare and Company bookstore. Also, this book is a good book. Uh, Sylvia Beach and the Lost Generation, A History of Literary Paris in the 20s and 30s by Noel Riley Finch. Uh, this is a really good book if you want to know, go more deeper into the writers and the literary scene going on in Paris. You have Hemingway, James Joyce, you have oh, a host of others. It goes more into it here. Uh, in here. So I recommend that. Also, we talk about James Joyce. 
You have, of course, Ulysses, the novel that you can buy. And also I recommend this biography on James Joyce by Richard Allman, James Joyce, the first revision of the 1959 classic. I read this, oh, 27 years ago. It's a classic biography of James Joyce. I recommend this uh, by Hel Hellman, Richard Hellman, James Joyce. Also, a book came out, oh, in uh, 2014, The Most Dangerous Book, The Battle for James Joyce's Ulysses by Kevin Bur Birmingham. Uh, it says here, for more than a decade, the book that literary critics now consider the most important novel in the English languages was illegal to own. <coughs> Sell, advertise, or purchase in most of the English-speaking world. James Joyce's big blue book, Ulysses, ushered in the modernist era and changed the novel for all time. But the genius of Ulysses was also its danger. It omitted absolutely nothing. All the minutia of Leopold Bloom's day, including unspeakable details, unfold with careful precision in its pages. The New York Society for the Suppression of Vice immediately banned the novel as obscene, lewd, and lascivious. Joyce, along with some of the most important publishers and writers of his era, had to fight for years to win the freedom to publish it. The most dangerous book tells the remarkable story surrounding Ulysses from the first stirrings of Joyce's inspiration in 1904 to its landmark federal obscenity trial in 1933. So if you want to know more about the publishing history of Ulysses by James Joyce, I recommend this book, The Most Dangerous Book, The Battle for James Joyce's Ulysses by Kevin Bur Birmingham. So I recommend these books. I was going to take them downstairs, but I thought I'd show them to you since I got them out. So, and then I was... Uh, Reading also uh, this book. Let me see here. I was reading uh, Can't Find My Way Home, uh, America and the Great Stoned Age, 1945 to 2000, by Martin Targoff. I've been reading this, and it was talking about the about the 60s and reading about the the uh, the golden age of marijuana and you know all these different things and I thought of this book when I was reading it deliberate prose the selected essays 1952-1995 by Allen Ginsberg forward by Ed, Edward Sanders and edited by Bill Morgan uh, there's, uh, he has, like, uh, talk about the great stone age. Uh, Ginsburg was a very advocate of legalizing marijuana. And he wrote a lot about drugs. Part two is the drug culture. He goes into, uh, all kinds of things. So I recommend this. Uh, deliberate Pro Selected Essays, 1952-1995 by Allen Ginsberg. Also, when you talk about the 60s, this book came to my mind. The 60s Years of Hope and Days of Rage by Todd Gillen. It's a very famous book on the 60s. If you want a, a good book on the 60s, I recommend this. Uh, it's really a famous book on the 60s. So I recommend these books, uh, the 60s and drug culture and the Beats and Ginsburg and what was going on in the 60s. So, so also I mentioned this book, uh, Ringer of Oli, A Life Played for Keeps by Emmett Grogan. There's a section on here. He was of Hyden Ashbury in San Francisco in the 60s. So I recommend these books. And then I, uh, when I, oh yeah, when I was, 
when I got this book out, I Can't Find My Way Home, America and the Great Stone Age, 1940 to 2000. This book right next to it down in our library was this book that you might be interested in, Hip, The History by John Lanlin. It says, Hip, The History is a story of an American obsession derived from the the woof word hemp or hippie to see or to open one's eyes which came to America with West African slaves. Hip is the dance between black and white or insider and outsider that gives America its unique flavor and rhythm. It has created fortunes, destroyed lives, and shaped the way millions of us talk, dress, dance, make love, or see ourselves in the mirror. Everyone knows what hip is. This is a story of how we got here. Hip, the history, draws the connection between Walt Whitman, Richard Hell, Raymond Chandler, and Snoop Dogg. It slinks among the pimps, hustlers, outlaws, junkies, scandals, white negroes, beats, geeks, beat boppers, and other hipsters who crashed the American experiment and without whom we might all be listing show tunes. So it goes into the whole history of, of being hip or what hipness is in American culture. So I, I recommend this. Also, John Langland, Leyland, he also wrote this book, Why Kerouac, Kerouac Manners, Matters, Lessons on, on the Road Where They're Not All What You Think by John Leyland. So these are all these books that come to my mind when I was reading. But that's why I've been reading basically the two days can't find my way home and I was reading the book on uh, Shakespeare and Company. So and I've been looking at these things, you know, I, I'm always looking at Ginsburg. I'm always reading something on the 60s because I'm a, my kind of, I'm kind of a child of the 60s, a product of the 60s. I'm really enjoying rereading. I can't find my way home. As you know, I'm a. I've read everything about Kerouac, everything on Kerouac, biographies, literary studies, his poetry, his novels, his letters, his diaries. Can't go wrong. And you all know I'm into James Joyce because he's on my wall. Up there is James Joyce, and there's Kerouac up there on my wall. So yeah, I'm into James Joyce and Kerouac because I'm a modernist. If you read, if you look at my videos and what I read, I'm a modernist. And uh, so yeah, so yeah, I recommend this book, The Most Dangerous Book, The Battle for James Joyce's Ulysses. And I must confess, I've tried to read Ulysses I don't know how many times and I failed. But it's my goal in life before I hit the dust to read completely Ulysses by James Joyce. So that's what I'm reading. These I gotta take down in the lower level now. I can, it's off my mind. Uh, so yeah, so I'm hoping you're having a good reading week. Uh, tomorrow is a Sunday, a new week. We're coming to the end of January. We'll be going into February. I got books coming in the mail, CDs. Uh, the weather here in West Michigan is snowing, so I can't go out to thrift stores, maybe local ones. I do got books coming in the mail. I got some books today. Today I volunteered at the uh, library used bookstore, but I don't, I'll look, I'll show them next video, Lord willing. So I'm hoping you're having, you had a good week and that you'll have a new good week. Thank you for the new subscribers. Be brave, be strong, be yourself, howl at the moon, do your little dance of death. See you next time. Bye.